Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. We've got a bit of a different intro for you guys today. Uh, here in beautiful Trinity Bellwoods Park. If you look back over there, you can kind of see the uh, CN Tower just a bit. It's a bit cloudy, so it's kind of hard. But yeah, as I said, we're going to be working on Bluetooth Low Energy Beacons. Here is, of course, our beacon. And now I'm going to grab my app. We're tracking the distance. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna walk away and we're gonna measure the distance. So here we go, we're at about three meters away. We'll walk back now and we're gonna see it go down up until we get close and of course it's zero. All right, uh, so that's it guys. So that was a fun intro, wasn't it? I thought it'd be really cool to actually go out and show you guys the app um, in action rather than kind of panning in from the side like I usually do. Especially because, as I said earlier, the topic that we're going to discuss today is Bluetooth Low Energy and beacons. So, it is important to know, uh, before we get into this, that um, beacon distance measurements are approximate measurements. So it's not as accurate as using a meter stick or a laser, but what it will do is give you a general idea of how far your phone is away from a device. And the reason that this is the case is just the nature of how um, beacons work. So what beacons do is they send out a signal called RSSI, which is a received signal strength indicator. And you can perform a very simple mathematical calculation on that in order to get an approximation of the distance in meters. So the beacon that we're gonna to use today is an Oroco beacon. And I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, Oroco does not know who I am. I do not make any money off of this. I have no affiliation. I just thought it might be nice to have a nice, um, easy beacon you guys could pick up if you wanted to follow along. This tutorial is going to start a little bit differently than they usually do because I'm going to have to show you how to set it up before we get into anything. But once we do that, I'll show the code. And the really nice thing about the code is it's very short. You don't even need to connect to the device. You just scan for it, get the RSSI, do the math, and show the result in the UI. Okay, so. That's enough for intros. Please like and subscribe, and let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to download the Rogo app. Uh, with the app comes this QR code, and you can just scan it. Uh, the app's not available in the app store. You actually have to download it from their website and sideload it. So if you guys remember, uh, a few months back when I started this series, I had to do another video on permissions in Android 12 and 13. Um, unfortunately, Oroco has not updated their app to work with Android 12 and 13. So for now, if you want to use it, you'll have to be using an Android 9 um, device or lower. Um, the app we're building today works with Android 12, 13 and up and also lower. So it works with like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. But the Oroco setup app only works with Android 10 and below or Android 9 and below. I'm sorry. So um, I have an Android 9 device here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up and uh, you can see there's a slot for a battery and I can even take this out. It's not a big deal. Uh, you can just open it up using a basic star screwdriver like I have here. And you need a CR2477 battery. So I'm gonna kind of slide this in. It's a little bit tricky. I can never get it easily. Okay, so there we go. And as you can see, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's like a blinking little light. Uh, what you want to do is you want to hit the button and the light will become um, solid. What we're then going to do is we're going to connect to our device and you're going to see these settings, right? And things you want to make sure you have on or you wanna make sure the signal is in long range mode. If it's not in long range mode for Bluetooth 5, this will not work on iOS devices and it will not work on your Android devices. So long range BT5 needs to be checked. Uh, another thing I like to do is make the interval really short. Um, so 100 milliseconds. Um, this app has a bug where the keyboard won't go unless you background it and foreground it. So that's why I had to do that. Uh, but yeah. Um, advertising 100 milliseconds, Bluetooth long range, uh, Bluetooth 5 long range is what you want to set up. And you want to hit send config 
and it will update the configuration on your device. Uh, once you're done that, you can just uh, pop it back in, disconnect, and the device will now start behaving um, as a beacon instead of behaving as um, a BLE normal device. So you can just put this cap back on, put in all the screws, and you should be all set. Okay, so let's have a look at the code. So here in the app.tsx, we just have some basic layout code, nothing special here or particularly notable. In the use BLE file, on the other hand, we have all the code to set up permissions and to scan for peripherals. This is explained in the first two videos. I'll link them in the description and I suggest you watch them if you haven't watched them yet. So if you have watched them, I'm gonna get now into actually writing the custom code to calculate the distance between the beacon and the phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a ring buffer here by tracking the number of samples and also by creating a ring buffer array that can hold three numbers. I'm gonna default all these to negative one for now because they're just sort of invalid samples. Next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a state so that we can show the distance on the UI. Um, I'm also gonna default the state to negative one because again, these samples are currently invalid until we actually try and track something. Now I'm gonna export the distance and I'm gonna write the custom scan for peripherals method. Scanning here is a little bit different than what we usually do. Uh, we're still gonna set our first parameter to null but in our configuration, we're going to allow duplicates and we're gonna set it to be low latency so that we can keep track of a lot more samples while we're scanning and um, get the distance a lot more accurately. Next, we're gonna enter the usual um, boilerplate for scanning and we're gonna start by um, calculating the distance. So in the distance, there's some unique things. Um, first is that uh, we're only gonna to wanna to collect events from devices with arrow in the name arrow being part of a Roco, which is the uh, beacon that we're using. And when we calculate the distance, there's kind of two parts to this. So you want to do um, 10 to the power of this formula we're building. We're going to start with 10 times 3, and this can be a number between 2 and 4, 4 being the strongest signal strength, 2 being the weakest. This minus 75 is the RSSI when the device is one meter away from the beacon. This will be different from beacon to beacon and you'll have to test it out on your own to get it just right. And we're going to subtract that from the current RSSI and divide it by the 10 times 3. We're then going to take that distance, we're going to put it into the distance buffer, and then the last thing we're going to do is take the average. But first we're going to say if there's any negative ones in the array, we're going to keep it negative one for now because we don't want that affecting it because we have some invalid samples. Okay, so um, here we're just gonna sum over all the distances in the distance buffer. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the average, round that average, and then put it into set distance. Uh, we're rounding because averages can, alt can um, often be decimal numbers. Oh, I used last index of, should have been length, but um, I'll fix that in a second. And we're gonna make sure we increment the number of samples because it does go up every single time uh, we do a scan. Okay, so um, let's try this out. So I'm going to move it away, move it close, move away, move close with the beacon. And as you can see, as I move away and I move close, the, uh, the number changes, so this works.